What's up, Lore Masters? In today's video, we'll be breaking down probably the most well-known and powerful scene in all of the First Contact movie. Last time, Picard was making some pretty stupid decisions which would ultimately result in the loss of the Enterprise, and even Earth. Everyone knew that it was time to blow the ship to holy hell, but he just couldn't let it go. Let's break it down. You son of a bitch. This really isn't the time. Okay, I don't know Jack about the 24th century, but everybody out there thinks that staying here and fighting the Borg is suicide. They're just afraid to come in here and say it. Overall, there isn't a lot to add to the scene just yet. They are setting up for what Picard is about to do, however. I will say, though, that the different intermixed cuts of mid-close-up shot to mid-shot and then wide shot is a great way of establishing the area they're in. It's also an effective way of showing how far apart the two are. Lily knows what he is doing is insane, and Picard is really set on trying to kill every last Borg. The crew is accustomed to following my orders. They're probably accustomed to your orders making sense. None of them understand the Borg as I do. No one does. No one can. <laughs> What is that supposed to mean? Six years ago, they assimilated me into their collective. I had their cybernetic devices implanted throughout my body. I was linked to the hive mind. Every trace of individuality erased. I was one of them. So you can imagine, my dear, I have a somewhat unique perspective on the Borg, and I know how to fight them. Now, if you will excuse me, I have work to do. So, jokes aside, this is the beginning of the cracks for Picard, and the camera work really helps to push that point. Picard still has on his superior visage, the veneer trying to stay intact. He believes that he is still an evolved human, but... As the man begins talking about the Borg and how only he can understand what's happening, the camera slowly begins to move closer to him. Things are starting to get much, much more intense. He wants them to suffer, and even now, we can begin to see the truth. I am such an idiot. It's so simple. The Borg hurt you, and now you're going to hurt them back. In my century, we don't succumb to revenge. We have a more evolved sensibility. Bullshit! I saw the look on your face when you shot those Borg on the holodeck. You were almost enjoying it! How dare you? There has to be an irony in modifying a gun because you can't kill your enemy with it, so you have to try and make it more lethal while saying you're above murder. Beyond that, we finally start seeing Picard truly face off with Lily. The camera moving up with him does give a little bit of a weird effect, like he's floating up, but the reason they do this is so they can keep that tight shot on him to show his emotion. It proves that he's forced to face the fact that he may not be as evolved as he thought. You can see the change in his tone and demeanor as well as... well, he's beginning to get irritated. Oh, come on, Captain. You're not the first man to get a thrill from murdering someone. I see it all the time. Get out! Or what? You'll kill me? Like you killed Ensign Lynch? There was no way to save him. You didn't even try. Oh, come on, Captain. You're not the first man to get a thrill from murdering someone. I see it all the time. Get out! Or what? You'll kill me? Like you killed Ensign Lynch? There was no way to save him. You didn't even try. If we're being honest here, this is unfair. Ensign Lynch and the other Borg were going to assimilate both of them. The drones were gone. Picard literally could do nothing for them. He couldn't try anything. So Lily coming at him like this is useless. She wouldn't know that, of course, but when Picard says there wasn't anything he could do, he's right. Though, that said, she isn't wrong in how he reacted. They probably did have to die, I wouldn't contend with that. But the feelings that Picard had when killing them was visceral, it was personal. Where was your involved sensibility then? I don't have time for this. Oh, hey! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt your little quest. Captain Ahab has to go hunt his whale. What? You do have books in the 24th century. 
So I've tried to do a bit of research into Picard and the illusions of him and Moby Dick. For the most part, it's really just consistent. Picard is being unreasonable. He is taking his crew to their deaths. It is a nice touch to use Moby Dick, though I question why they are teaching the book immediately after World War III with no real governments, but whatever. This is not about revenge. Liar! This is about saving the future of humanity! Jean-Luc, blow up the damn ship! No! No! <laughs> of this movie, both in-universe and from my audience, it was stated that Picard can't fight the Borg because he is emotionally compromised. I do stand by that statement, and I believe the Enterprise was benched due to the inevitable Dominion War. But this scene shows that the captain couldn't handle the situation either. Personally, I believe if Picard is this far gone, he shouldn't be in command. Even if he wasn't fighting the Borg, it is possible this type of trauma could come up from fighting almost any species. Additionally, I do believe this is the antithesis of everything Gene Roddenberry wanted when it comes to TNG, especially when you look at the first and second season when he was in charge of it. According to Gene, this would have never happened to Picard. However, in canon, it did, and it's really interesting. It shows how no one saw this coming, even Riker. It shows how egotistical or naive Starfleet is. The man had had this trauma, and it was never diagnosed, never addressed for so long. On that note, what the hell is Deanna doing on that ship anyway? That aside, I'm of a few minds on the topic overall. It's interesting to see how all of this affects him from the beginning of the movie to his traumatic experience here. I've always considered Picard to be the proto-human, so his fall is somewhat sad for me, though it is realistic. Overall, this specific part of the scene is more a thought piece. It's looking at what happened to Picard. Though from a technical standpoint, the camera work is done well and the trick of starting off further away and moving in slower and slower is a common theme we see throughout. Also, they invade our space and we fall back. Um, are you talking about Wolf 359 or was it another invasion or an invasion invasion? Do the Borg own some space at this point or? They simulate entire worlds. And we fall back. What worlds fell back? Are we talking about all the way in the Delta Quadrant, or is there a Borg stronghold now in the Alpha Quadrant? Not again. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. Because worlds and entire swaths of space, that's okay, but don't you dare touch the Enterprise E. Broke your little ships. <laughs> See you around, Ahab. And he piled on the whale's white hump a sum of all the rage and hate. If his chest had been a cannon, he would have shot his heart upon it. What? Bobby Dick. Actually, I never read it. years, hunting the white whale that crippled him. 
quest for vengeance. But in the end, it destroyed him and his ship. I guess he didn't know when to quit. This is a great scene between the two. I'll be doing a video on my rewrite that excludes Lily. We're going to redo this scene, but I'll admit that the actress is wonderful. When removing her, you do lose something from the movie. If I had my way, I'd probably recast her as a Starfleet officer with Hawk that plays a major role. Stay tuned for the next one, where we will examine the blowing up of the Enterprise and the confrontation with Data.